Hi guys, so MXGP3 is now out in stores for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC platforms. Now for this overview video we'll be taking a look at the various game modes, we're going to touch on the career, have a look at the different weather conditions as well as a number of tracks and of course have a look at the physics and sounds among other areas. So we're going to kick things off here with a race at Argentina. As you can see, very wet race, so this is one of the new uh, elements for MXGP3 over two. Of course, the wet weather, which does make a fundamental difference to the race in action, as you would imagine. Uh, it's a little bit dark, actually, this scene here. Uh, that is my fault. It isn't quite this dark as when you play the game, so I will need to tinker with a set in there, so apologies for that. But um, it's... When I first got onto MXGP3, I couldn't believe how different it felt to 2. You know, I have put a lot of time with 2, did enjoy the game. You know, it had you know, a number of issues, as every game does. But uh, with MXGP3, it really does seem like Milestone are going in the right direction here. You know, it really is a different beast completely to 2. You know, you can see just how high you jump. I don't know if it's the point of view, the field of view. But uh, it feels like you jump a lot higher in this game than in the number 2. And uh, you know the audio, of course, has been one area that Milestone have really improved. And of course, with a number of their titles, we've seen improvements. Uh, upcoming titles such as Gravel, and of course, Moto GP uh, 17, which comes out, uh, I believe, on the 15th of June. So that does have uh, incredible sound. So that's probably the best sound we've ever heard from a bike game. So they are going in the right direction here with these improvements, and MXGP3 is no exception. So all these bikes you'll be seeing in this overview are the four-stroke bikes because those are the bikes that are initially unlocked because I'm very early on with the game still but um, in future videos we'll hopefully have some two-stroke action for you guys. So this Argentina race, uh, you know, wet conditions, really tough to get to grips with. Probably the most fundamental difference is the actual ground deformation. We've seen it in MXGP1, we were impressed with it, whereas in 2, uh, it almost took a step backwards, didn't it, I found. Uh, so it was a bit disappointed in that respect. For me, MXGP2, the track surfaces were almost like carpets. They were very flat. Uh, there wasn't a lot of bumps or rivets to them. There wasn't a lot to them. So you could take the race in line uh, with little to no uh, difficulty once you have you know, a, a decent amount of track knowledge and experience with the game. It was pretty easy to get your lines right. Uh, with MXGP3, it's a totally different beast. Um, you know, it, there's there's incredible levels of track deformation here, really surprising. So it really impressed me, and you really do feel it. I find on the dry, especially. So if you come out of the grooves, you know the well sort of trodden path, uh, particularly in the dry, you'll notice it because you know often when you find these sort of uh, lines, you know where previous bikes have been on, you know to the side of them will have like a, a mound of dirt and earth. So. You've, you've got to sort of try and stay as much as you can in those grooves because you come out of them you'll know about it because you'll go up against the sort of uh, a bump on the side and you know it will sort of take you off your line so there is a lot of that going on with this game particularly as the race evolves and gets to the latter stages you'll find uh, that more and more of that goes on uh, I found it a little bit less noticeable in the wet so I guess that's uh, you know, one of those things where perhaps it's, it's trying to replicate the wet soil is, is more prone to uh, or at least less prone to making sort of bumps and, and rivets here and there but here's the second race here this is at Thailand this, this is interesting really because we have uh, this sort of contrast between the lovely blue sunny skies but the actual track is wet uh, so this is one of the uh, conditions that you can uh, pre-select so this is the uh, basically a wet track setting this is and you'll see the different uh, weather conditions in just a moment so I compared the lot but uh, again we're going to switch the viewers up here you can see the first person viewpoints and for me MXGP2 I wasn't really a fan of the first person viewpoint I do like the first person viewpoint a lot in racing games you know whether it's be with cars or with bikes but MXGP2 didn't quite do it for me it's a little bit too erratic uh, you know the steering is a little bit jerky whereas here on the first person view and even indeed in the third person view as well the steering you just feel you have more control there's more degrees uh, more accuracy uh, more subtle movements so that's really good to see and I guess we found uh, you could trace that back to sort of ride 2 had that lovely satisfying 
flow to the game where you could you know, put a little bit of uh, rotation on the stick and it would translate that nicely. And you know, the same is pretty much true of MXGP3. So, you know, it's for me, I'm able to play in the first person viewpoint uh, with little to no problems, so that's great. There's two chase cams, so this is the far away chase cam. And oh, we're going to have a look now at the various uh, weather conditions so you can see there the clear, cloudy, wet track, intermittent rain, and rain. So you can see the difference between cloudy and wet track. Cloudy conditions, the track is actually drier, whereas obviously wet track, the, the track is wet, but of course you've got the nice sunny uh, skies. So there's an uh, interesting uh, contrast, I thought, between the two. It's a mid of rain. You can see the rain coming down. It's pretty heavy. The track is pretty well soaked. And of course rain, it's absolutely saturated with rain. And, uh, you know, pretty tricky as a result. You will slide around a lot more in the heavier rain and the intermittent of rain and say the wet track so and of course in the clear it's a lot easier cloudy pretty much the same as clear uh, except for the skies of course but uh, you know it's interesting to see the various uh, conditions there and you know you can choose any one of these uh, as you race or you can have it on random and it will pick one of these conditions for you of course i was a lot quicker in the clear compared to the rain as you would expect so it's really nice to see this and it just adds so much more to the racing action you know it's not just clear and sunny every day at every single race you know race one race two exactly the same condition so it's really good to see this in mxgp3 and it really does add a sort of, a new, a sort of well, several layers of extra sort of uh, extra spice to the game so it's really good to see that they've got this in here and of course couple that with the physics you know and sounds and the graphics and it really does feel like an altogether different package to MXGP2. You know the bikes felt really well, I felt like I had a good level of control using the controllers. I could put the bike pretty much where I wanted it except when I'm fighting against the rivets and ruts uh, on the ground. But uh, we're going to have a little look at the career mode here. So the career mode compared to two is pretty much the same again in three. Uh, of course we have the addition of the two stroke bikes. We, there is sort of different layouts, uh, menus and bits and pieces. Of course, the first thing you do with any milestone game is you create a rider. This is something you cannot skip. So it's like a, a recent milestone tradition that we sort of bulk at. But uh, it is what it is. So you get to name your, your rider, uh, put their nationality and whatnot. And of course, you get to choose a manufacturer. Now, when you do choose a manufacturer, you are actually given uh, two bikes. You're given a MXGP bike and a MX2 bike. Now these are both four stroke bikes, so you unlock the two stroke bikes uh, later down the line. So there's my lovely KTM. Uh, tutorials are in, in a sense. Uh, MXGP2 you had the tutorial videos, whereas here it's basically just uh, sort of written down for you. So, and of course you get to choose uh, your sponsorship to start your career mode. And of course you earn reputation and money as you compete in races. And just with MXGP2, uh, sponsor and team interest rises as you sort of rack up those uh, reputation points. You can see the team interest there. Once it hits to 100%, uh, the team will come in and make an offer. Uh, the, these are the game tips. So these replace the career emails that you got before. So it's just a nice little layout. It's a little bit better than, say, the emails were in GP2. So it's just a little bit nicer laid out. Uh, you can edit, of course, your rider data from the career menu. And, of course, the rider customization is in. So you've got the various bits there, the racing suits, the uh, goggles, the helmets, and all that good stuff. So you just have a quick look at what's available. And, of course, bike customization is in as well. So you can you know, tinker about with the various uh, things here. Of course, you have the exhaust. Uh, you have the tires, all the various sort of appearance parts and whatnot. Now, the... This is the compound mode, which is basically the test track from MXGP2. And like MXGP2, uh, it is split into two segments. You can see the various uh, tuning here. You've got the suspension and transmission. Uh, very basic setup there, transmission. And of course, you can save all your setups as you please. So we're going to dive into the what they call the compound mode or the test track to you and I. So this was my very first uh, experience of the game you're watching right now. It's the very, very first. Uh, so it's, it was very unusual, shall we say, uh, jumping on three after putting so much time in with number two. It just felt so different. You know, the bikes responded better to my inputs. I felt that the bikes were 
uh, getting more air and you know when you're using the rear brakes as well I find that you could actually skid the rear tyre around a lot snappier than you could in MXGP2 and the right away I was leaning forward there trying to get around the turn a bit tighter and you don't go as tight as you would say in MXGP2 so there are a lot of subtle differences so we're going to jump into a race here this is the sunny race here in the Netherlands track you can see a lot better start this time around it's all about timing when the gates are going to go down what I tend to do is when the camera stops panning down I count to three in my head and then I just gun it you know and just hope that I don't catch the the row there and you know it really does mess up your start if you do but uh, you can see a lot brighter this time and I think I did uh, change one of the brightness settings so this is more representative of what you'll see you can see the massive amount of crowds which we touched on before uh, it's, it's really impressive you see all the flare effects going off you know it really does add life to the tracks the one thing I did find though I don't hear enough cheering at times uh, sometimes you do sometimes you don't you can also hear some sort of individual clapping as well which is good to hear but overall you know MXGP MXGP2 MXGP3 there's that continual evolution of more and more track details on the side you know more crowds more flags banners advertising boards you name it, it just adds so much life to the event which is lacking in racing games yeah we've seen many many rally games even recent years that just lack that life so it's really good to see that milestone are you know trying to add inject that life to the racing genre which is great to see so i find the tracks are pretty wide uh, compared to two it might be the point of view sort of throwing me off but they do feel that they are slightly wider than say mxgp2 um, and you know with mxgp2 if you go off the track a little bit you have the automatic reset Whereas here, I think I've only been reset once or twice, so it is very different. Of course, you have the night race as well. This is Qatar, and you know I found that the although the handling it was harder to get the bikes around the circuits because you're fighting against the bumpy surface. I did find it actually was harder to come off my bike. So it is worth noting as well. I am using the Pro Physics. Uh, the rider weight is set to manual. I'm using automatic gears. And I'm using the uh, the brakes individually, so better point that out. And yeah, it just felt harder to fall off the bike. Whereas with MXGP2, uh, it was pretty easy to fall off your bike at times. Whereas with three, it's more of a case that you know if you do fall off, it's probably because you've done something stupid. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Of course, some people won't be happy with that because they, they want to have a more re realistic experience, uh, and you know they want to punish the players that do sort of bump, but. Uh, you know, with MXGP3, you know, certainly the, the ground, the feeling of the earth, the, the various lines, the sort of ruts, uh, you know, there's a lot more depth to it in that sense. But in terms of actually falling off your bike, I did find it a lot harder to actually do so. So you can get away with some bumping and grinding against other riders. So it all depends on what you're looking for. Some, that'll be a plus to some players and a negative to others. And when you do finish races, you'll see here you're given skill points which can range from 0 to 100 and they level up after each race of course the better the result the more skill points you have and the closer you get to 100 the harder it is to level up and of course you can see that the rain ability i didn't score anything on that because simply it wasn't wet so uh, you know just one or two little extra touches here that milestone have put into their game right so back into the main menu then so just having a little look through what is available so we have the Grand Prix mode, which is basically like the quick race mode. And we have the championship mode where you can set up your custom championship. So you can edit uh, the championship season. You can add tracks or delete tracks as you see fit. And of course, this is also uh, available online. We will take a look at some of the online options in just a moment. So if there's a track or two you don't like, you know, you can simply just edit them out and uh, get on with the tracks that you do like. So it's a really nice feature there. Of course, we have the time attack mode, which is, you know, pretty self-explanatory really you see uh, just having a little look here at all the various tracks available for the game so quite a few different tracks there, all different surfaces and of course each could have its own sort of different weather so it really is mixing things up nicely and each really does have its own sort of characteristics its own character and of course there's the motocross of nations where you represent your nation and you'll do battle with up to 11 other nations in a team of three riders which have, uh, which are split between the MXGP, the MX2 and open category. So we're just gonna have a little look 
at some motocross of nations action so we have here a wet track so the sky lovely and sunny but we have a wet track as if it's just rain so it almost looks like uh, i can almost sense a rainbow in the background there somewhere but you can see i'm representing great britain and we've got the great britain colors on of course, uh, you know there are a number of balls <laughs> i make contact there with an ai rider and it hits the deck but uh yeah, it's nice to have this uh, motocross of nations you know he had it in mxgp2 uh, there is no stadium series actually in mxgp3 and also no real events that i could see so perhaps that will be introduced with uh, future dlc but all the fundamental stuff is there so we're going to jump into some multiplayer just to have a look at the various options so we're going to have a create a match here. There's all the various uh, different options here you can select so track selection, uh, you know, whether people vote on it or not, or random. Uh, the AI difficulty, so you can have AI opponents online, which is great. And, uh, you know, you can have the Grand Prix mode, you can have uh, championship mode as well online, so you can edit your championships and people can vote on these tracks. And there's various other things there, such as qualifying and, of course, the weather. So plenty there to tinker with, which is good to see. Be interested to see how populated the lobbies actually will be because I find in milestone games it's, it can be pretty difficult to get uh, a game in a you know, timely fashion at least. And of course there are the leaderboards, every different track has its own leaderboard and you can already see there are plenty of guys there populating the leaderboards uh, as the game is now out. And uh, so there you go, some more leaderboard times there. So we're going to wrap up this overview video with a race at Mexico so this is a full race here three laps which is the default setting this is on the medium setting for the AI difficulty which I find is perhaps a little bit trickier than MXGP2 but then it's probably because I you know I haven't spent very long with this game and it's going to take a little bit of time to get the best out of it because it feels so different from MXGP2 you can see the fantastic replays this is one thing I haven't mentioned yet I was waiting until the end here uh, amazing replays, the, the level of detail and the, you know, the shine on the bikes, the way the jerseys ruffle in the wind. Uh, just look at the way they're coming over the jump there doing the scrubs. And yeah, of course, the scrubs, you know, you press the analog sticks in one direction uh, and then you can push it in the other direction to sort of stop the scrub. So you can get out of them as you wish rather than having to wait for the scrub to play out its animation, which was always a frustration in number two. But uh, great to see these amazing replays. You know, when was the last time I was really blown away with a replay? Uh, probably GT Sport, but um, yeah, amazing stuff. I've got to say, really was impressed with these replays. Lovely sort of pro uh, post processing effects going on as well, depth of field and whatnot. It's, it really does add. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those replays that you want to watch once you've done a race, and there's not many games I can actually say that about. So it's really good to see they've got that in here. So you know, overall, I'd say that the bikes are easier to handle in a sense that you probably won't veer off the track suddenly all of a sudden like you do in two occasionally you know much more precision to the control of the bikes you, you certainly won't fall off the bike as much as you perhaps did with MXGP2 but what you will be doing is you will be fighting the rough terrain as you can see me running wide there demonstrating just that so it's not a case of going full throttle around turns that you perhaps could have done with two so you, you can understeer depending on what, if you're in the groove or not uh, so there is a, quite a bit to it. Now you will notice the AI opponents, some of them actually are driving into the stand there. So I imagine that'll be uh, a patch that will patch that out in no time. So perhaps best to ignore that for now. It's the only track I've actually come across where they've actually done that. So I assume it is a track specific problem which will be you know patched out in no time, no doubt. Overall though, visually, you know, fantastic visuals. We talked about the crowds earlier, but look at the actual the track itself you know we've complained about mxgp games before with the track surface was quite low res but here i mean it looks incredible you know each line on the track you know does make a difference to the, the way the bike handles so it really look at that i mean wow the wet track really struggling there going wide and you get that lovely sheen as the sun reflects the water off the track surface as well you can see right now it's, it's fantastic so this certainly is the best looking uh, motocross game that i've ever seen and the best uh, Probably the best sounding, certainly on consoles at least. So you know, lots of fun, MXGP3, it will take some time to get the best out of because it's so different from 2 as I keep saying, but overall it just feels more raw, it feels more exciting, you know, better sense of speed, uh, you know, you 
fighting against the track all the time, you're fighting against the different weather effects, you know, it's a lot more interesting in that respect, uh, different point, uh, field of view, you know, just, just about everything about it I feel is improved over two. You know, a little bit of a shame that perhaps they didn't innovate more in the career mode, it's more or less the same as what you get in two with, you know, one or two touches here and there. Uh, one or two game modes as well have been pulled out of the game, so in that sense it's a little bit disappointing, but in just in terms of sheer gameplay, you know, I think it's a winner. I think the sense of speed is so much better, I think it's just so much more fun and less frustrating, you know, you, you don't come off the bike as much and there's not those awful resets you get every two seconds, you know, should you go a little bit wide, you know, often with MXGP2, I would go a little bit wide, but I feel like I could make the turn and the game would just reset me, you know, so it, it was a little bit frustrating on that front. But um, not so with uh, free. we haven't seen a reset in this overview video at all, so that really does speak volumes uh, for the way that the game is now. You know, slightly wider tracks, perhaps, and um, just better physics overall, and, and uh, less fussy when it comes to overtakes, which is really good to see. So, the fantastic replays, I'm just, I'm watching the bottom screen as much as I am watching the top here, because uh, you know, I was just so surprised. You can see the level of detail. I mean, the track looks good enough uh, when you play, but when you look at the replay data, you could, uh, replay, you can see the sort of grooves on the track even more so, and just the amount of detail there is. Because it's very hard to model. I mean, surf detail such as this, you know, I can imagine it being an incredible uh, drain on resources, and you know, it's fantastic to see what they've squeezed out of this game. It's just a PS4 version, so you know, it's it really is impressive. So coming around this turn then, you can see I'm probably, I think I'm in first place at the moment, I can't actually see the uh, indicator of where I'm at, I think I might be in first, as I run wide again, so again the wet track giving me some issues, you know, I'm, I'm taking the lines as I would in MXGP2, so uh, every time I go wide it's like, oh, you know, this was, this didn't happen before, so it is, uh, and again hitting the, the side there, so uh, not quite getting it right, but I do switch up the views every now and again just to sort of demonstrate uh, what each feels like, and of course, uh, if you guys would like, uh, I would do some races in, in different viewpoints as well, just to show off uh, what it's like. So anyway, that was it for MXGP free overview. We'll have more coming up on the title very shortly. Thanks for watching. Well, how do you like it? Makes me feel.